The Witch's Graveyard Horror Story My name is Diego, and my life took an unexpected turn due to the family problems that my parents faced. Overwhelmed by difficulties, they made the difficult decision to send me to live with my Aunt Luca, an intriguing and mysterious woman who is dedicated to performing cleansings and spiritual practices in the small town where she lived. At first, I resisted with all my strength leaving my house, not to mention that the last place I wanted to go was a town with almost no electricity, and, even worse, with an aunt that I barely knew, however, my parents wanted. I don't let myself. They gave the choice. The time period in which all this happened was Day of the Dead a very deep-rooted and important holiday in my aunt's town. It was a time when the streets were filled with colors, marigold flowers, and the aromas of traditional cuisine. But it was also enveloped in a particular atmosphere, where the veil between the world of the living and that of the dead seemed to fade. Amidst all the hustle and bustle and preparations for the festival, I heard about a challenge floating around among the local kids. The rumor spread like fire and reached my ears. They spoke of an old, dark cemetery known as the Witch's Graveyard. Its name comes from Alma Gutierrez, a woman accused of witchcraft centuries ago. His spirit was said to still inhabit this place and many claimed to have witnessed unexplained phenomena near his grave. Amaguti Reza's story aroused my curiosity and fueled my desire to integrate into this new environment. To gain the respect of the other children in town, I decided to take on the challenge of entering the witch's graveyard in the middle of the night on Day of the Dead. The challenge was to enter after the cemetery closed and take one of the offerings placed on Alma Gutierrez's grave as proof of her arrival. Although fear filled my being, I couldn't let it stop me. I told myself over and over that I had to face my fears and show my courage. I mentally prepared myself for what was to come mustering all the courage I had in me. Convinced of my decision, I waited anxiously for the night of the Day of the Dead to arrive. When the time came, darkness enveloped every corner of the city. The lights of candles and lanterns illuminated the altars and the paths leading to the cemeteries. The atmosphere was charged with a special aura, full of mystery and solemnity. With my heart pounding, I headed towards the witch's cemetery. The story of Alma Gutierrez was popular in this town, especially because some people came to her grave to leave offerings and ask for favors in return. The challenge was simple. It consisted of entering the cemetery after it closed and taking one of the many offerings placed on the grave as proof of having arrived there. Even though I was overcome with fear, I didn't want to lose the reputation I had worked so hard to achieve. Despite everything, I accepted the challenge. Stealthily, I waited for the Pantheon Guardian to make his first inspection before entering this dark place. Once inside, I walked for what seemed like an eternity, as the witch's grave was at the back of the cemetery. The darkness grew more and more eerie, and as I got closer, I heard strange noises. I even swore I felt someone breathing right behind me. Finally, I arrived at the tomb of Alma Gutierrez. Alone, I would never have dared to approach this place, even if I lived there for a very short time. Witches were my biggest fear so I was pleasantly surprised to find that the tomb was in perfect condition. It was full of candles, offerings, and decorations. 
I was amazed by the macabre beauty of this place, and was only able to snap out of my reverie when I heard the scream from the nightstand, which put me on alert. I decided to act quickly and remove something from the grave as proof of my courage. My trembling hands approached a small ceramic statuette of a raven, one of the symbols associated with Alma Gutierrez. I took it carefully, feeling a strange sensation of electricity running through my skin when I came into contact with it. Without wasting any time, I put the statuette in my backpack and prepared to flee the cemetery. However, as I moved further away from Alma Gutierrez's grave, the strange noises intensified. A cold, biting wind began to blow, piercing my clothes and cutting my bones. I looked around and witnessed the terrifying scene, the ghosts of several people emerging from the graves around me. Their translucent, disfigured figures glided through the air, emitting an unearthly darkness. Screams and whispers of anguish filled the air, enveloping me in an atmosphere of indescribable horror. I felt trapped in a world between reality and nightmare. Panic set in, but my survival instinct kicked in. I ran through the rows of graves, stumbling in the darkness and hearing the echo of my own footsteps mingling with the moans of ghosts. The intense cold seemed to increase with every step, as if these vengeful spirits wanted to drag me with them into eternity. Finally, I managed to get out of the cemetery. I ran toward the safety of the street, my heart pounding and my breath short. I looked back one last time and saw the wraiths retreating, unable to leave the edge of the graveyard. I breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that I had escaped from that cursed place. The next day, I showed up with the town boys with this statuette, bragging about my courage and how I wasn't afraid of anything or anyone. I thought I had gotten away with it. However, it didn't take long for strange things to start happening around me. My health began to deteriorate rapidly, my body showing worrying signs of the consequences of my boldness. Dark bruises began to appear on my skin as if they were imprints left by invisible hands. These bruises multiplied quickly, spreading throughout my body and causing intense, constant pain. In addition to the bruises, sharp pains ran through my bones, as if they were being pierced by invisible needles. Every movement was agony and I found myself constantly doubled over in pain. My joints became stiff and swollen, making even the simplest tasks difficult. The cold I had felt at the cemetery had now become a perpetual sensation that seemed to emanate from the depths of my being. No matter how many layers of clothing I wore, or how hot I was, I always felt an icy presence enveloping me and making me shiver. In addition to physical problems, there are recurring nightmares and disturbing visions. In my dreams, the ghosts of Alma Gutierrez's tomb appeared before me, their faces distorted and full of anger. They whispered incomprehensible words to me and urged me to join them in their eternal torment. My appearance was haggard and the look of terror was constant in my eyes. I have become a shadow of what I once was. The curse manifested itself in different ways. Objects that moved on their own, incomprehensible whispers that filled my head, and shadows that seemed to follow me around every corner. Alma Gutierrez's presence seemed to follow me wherever I went. My nights became hell, plagued by vivid and terrifying nightmares, in which the silhouette of the witch loomed over me laughing mischievously while uttering incomprehensible words. My life became a constant torment. Every day was a battle against the fear and terror that surrounded me. 
I became reclusive, locked in my own home, fearing any interaction with the outside world. Even in my shelter, I could feel his presence, stalking me from the shadows and reminding me that I would never be safe. My aunt, desperate to help me, stepped up her rituals and cleansing. She burned sacred herbs and performed invocations in a desperate attempt to free my soul from the evil influence that afflicted me. However, his efforts seemed in vain. The negative energy continued to cling to the house, persisting in its goal of destroying me. The putrid smell that invaded the place became even more nauseating. It was as if the spirits trapped in limbo were manifesting through the suffocating stench that permeated every corner. No matter how many times we cleaned the house, the smell of putrefaction always returned, enveloping us in its fetid coat. The horror story of the witch's graveyard. But that wasn't the worst. Every morning, I woke up to my clothes, soaked in a black, slimy substance. The substance seemed to emanate from the very walls of the house, as if a dark force was seeping from within and adhering to everything it touched. I tried washing the clothes over and over again, but it was useless. The black stain refused to disappear, as if it were deeply impregnated into the fibers. My appearance became increasingly haggard and unhealthy. The darkness emerging from the walls seemed to have seeped into my being, consuming my vitality and filling me with anxiety. My aunt, helpless in the situation, looked for help wherever she could find it. One night, while in a fitful sleep, I was suddenly awakened by a feeling of oppression in the atmosphere. My eyes slowly opened, and what I saw before me made my blood run cold. There, next to my bed, was the grotesque figure of Alma Guti Arez, the witch who lived in the witch's cemetery. His appearance was terrifying. His wrinkled and worn skin hung from his face, revealing an evil and merciless look. She looked at me with penetrating eyes, mocking my misfortune. His laughter echoed through the room, ringing in my ears like a macabre echo. I tried to scream, but the words stuck in my throat. I was paralyzed with fear, unable to move or escape this evil presence. Alma Gutierrez approached slowly, her silhouette fading and materializing with each step she took. His sinister laugh intensified, filling the room with its dark power. Eventually, the witch disappeared into the darkness, leaving me shivering and in a cold sweat in my bed. I dared to touch my back, and my hand found a series of nasty scratches spreading across my skin. These were palpable evidence of the terrifying encounter he had just experienced. At dawn, I decided to desperately seek help. My aunt, concerned about my increasingly deteriorating condition, searched every corner for answers. She consulted healers, shamans, and paranormal experts, but none of them seemed to have a solution to my situation. The days passed and my health deteriorated rapidly. The wounds on my back became infected and the black, slimy substance that had emerged from the walls began to cover my entire body. My aunt continued her rituals and purification, but nothing seemed to stop the curse that had been placed on me. My appearance became increasingly haggard and unhealthy. The darkness emerging from the walls seemed to have seeped into my being, consuming my vitality and filling me with anxiety. My aunt, helpless in the situation, looked for help wherever she could find it. The townspeople, upon learning of my misfortune, began to avoid me, fearing that the curse would spread to them. I was alone, 
abandoned by everyone except my aunt, who clung to the hope of finding a solution. The days pass, and the situation gets worse. The black, slimy substance that was previously coming out of the walls was now also leaking out of my mouth in the form of vomit. Each time this happened, I felt my strength drain even more, leaving me in a state of physical and mental weakness. Not only did my body suffer the consequences, but my mind as well. Mental blackouts began to appear, moments in which I lost control of my actions and fell into a kind of trance. My aunt was terrified by these protests and feared for her own safety and that of those around me. To avoid any dangerous situations, my aunt made the difficult decision to tie me to the bed for safety. It was a drastic measure, but she believed it was the only way to protect me and others from the harm I could cause in my moments of uncontrolled violence. So, I found myself confined to my own room, with my body weakened and my movements restricted. My aunt stayed by my side day and night, desperately trying to find a solution. She delved deeper into the witch's dark secrets and consulted occult experts, desperately searching for a clue that could free me from this curse. These days became an amalgamation of physical pain, mental confusion, and despair. Despite my aunt's efforts, none of the solutions tried so far have worked. The curse seemed more powerful than we imagined, clinging to me with relentless ferocity. In the midst of this darkness, my aunt stood firm and never gave up hope of finding a solution. Even though I couldn't express it, I felt grateful to her for her unconditional love and her tireless fight to free me from this nightmare. Desperate to find a solution that seemed to elude her, my aunt heard rumors of a mysterious shaman who lived deep within the mountain. This shaman was said to have extensive knowledge of dark forces and possess supernatural abilities capable of defying any curse. Driven by renewed hope, my aunt decided to undertake a dangerous journey with me into the depths of the mountain in search of this shaman. Even though I was already very weak, we knew this was a journey we had to take together. We passed through dense forests, crossed rushing rivers, and defied all natural obstacles and the warnings of those who feared for our safety. Finally, after days of exhausting travel, we managed to reach the shaman's refuge. The home was hidden among ancient trees and radiated a mystical energy that made it clear that this man was in tune with the supernatural. My aunt humbly appeared before the shaman and told him of the terrible curse that afflicted me, explaining the physical and mental devastation that had consumed me. The shaman's penetrating gaze seemed to penetrate into his soul, assessing the seriousness of the situation. After listening carefully to my aunt's story, the shaman nodded sadly and sighed deeply. His eyes reflected understanding of ancient knowledge and connection to the spiritual world. Disrespect for this witch's spirit has unleashed a powerful and twisted curse the shaman said in a calm but firm tone. I cannot undo what has been done, but I can try to give you protection and relief. The shaman rose from his seat and began collecting herbs and sacred objects from his shrine. Then, with his skilled hands, he created a series of amulets and talismans imbued with protective energies and blessings. The first amulet was a transparent crystal necklace carved with delicate sacred symbols. It represented clarity and purity, and its purpose was to dispel the darkness around me. Every time he wore it, I felt the revitalizing energy flowing through me. 
The second amulet was a bracelet of hand-carved wooden beads. Pearls represented strength and connection with nature. The bracelet reminded me that I was rooted in the earth and had the power to overcome any obstacle. As I touched the beads, I could feel the comforting warmth and protective energy that enveloped me. The third amulet was a small glass jar filled with aromatic herbs. This pot contained a carefully selected blend of sacred plants, which, when opened, released an intoxicating and purifying aroma. By deeply inhaling its scent, I felt rejuvenated and protected from negative energies. Finally, the shaman gave me a small package wrapped in a silk cloth. Inside the package, I found a talisman engraved with ancient symbols. It was a protective talisman, designed to ward off any evil or negative influence that might come near me. I carried it with me in my pocket, feeling safe and protected by its power. After receiving the amulets, my aunt and I returned to town where I stayed for a few more months before my parents decided it was time to return to the town where they lived. Even though I was protected by the amulets, I felt the need to continue learning and seeking a permanent solution to the curse affecting me. Therefore, I visited my aunt more frequently, wanting to absorb all the knowledge and wisdom she had acquired. My aunt became my guide and mentor sharing with me the stories and teachings she had learned from the shaman. Together, we studied ancient books, consulted experts, and explored any clues that could help us break the curse. Even though we didn't find an immediate solution, each meeting with my aunt and each learning acquired brought me a little closer to undoing the curse. No matter how long it took, I was determined to free myself from this dark fate I had imposed on myself for disrespecting the dead. Today, I still have some nightmares, but I am convinced that a day will come when I will be able to fully get my life back. Thank you for joining us for this spine-tingling story. We hope you found it both thrilling and thought-provoking. If you enjoyed this video, Please consider participating in our channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing it with your friends. Your support goes a long way in helping us create more engaging content for you. Goodbye, and may you always tread carefully in the world of the unknown.